Good evening and welcome to the 21st Annual Frederick Church Awards. I'm Sean Sawyer, President of the Olana Partnership, and I'm here in Frederick Church's painting studio at Olana. We are excited to have you with us this evening virtually, and we thank you very much for your support. Tonight, we present the 2020 Frederick Church Awards to two great friends of Olana, David Redden and Eleanor Jones Harvey. At the end of this 30-minute program, we will announce a special live tribute to our honorees, so please stay with us. The Olana Partnership operates Olana State Historic Site in a public-private partnership with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. This year, we are particularly grateful that Olana has remained open as a public park throughout the COVID crisis. Church's 250-acre landscape has provided a place of safe recreation and inspiration for tens of thousands of people. Hi, I'm Amy Hausman, director of Olana State Historic Site. Olana is a public park that's free and open to all. And over the last nine months, we've been so gratified to welcome a rich array of first-time visitors to Olana. We've seen a broad group of people, diverse people, coming from all over this community, coming to find relief and refuge in our beautiful landscape. We're very grateful to Governor Andrew Cuomo for keeping New York State Parks open during the pandemic. Our New York State Parks crew has been working tirelessly to keep Olana safe and beautiful for our visitors. And the Olana Partnership has been producing incredible virtual and on-site public programming to keep people connected to Olana and the things that we do here. A national historic landmark, Olana is the most intact artist environment in the United States. It embodies Frederick Church's vision of the promise of America as a place where people live in harmony with nature. Let's take a look. In the 19th century, Frederick Edwin Church became the most famous artist in the United States, best known for his adventurous travels and bold paintings of the natural world. Born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1826, the gifted Frederick Church decided at a young age that he wanted to become an artist. The art collector Daniel Wadsworth persuaded the landscape painter Thomas Cole to accept Church as his pupil. In 1844, 18-year-old Frederick went to study with Cole in Catskill, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River, and accompanied him on sketching excursions in the nearby Catskill Mountains. Cole noted that Church had the finest eye for drawing in the world. In 1848, at age 22, Church became the youngest artist to be elected to the National Academy of Design. Frederick Church established a studio in New York City and quickly gained a reputation for expansive New England views that synthesized intensive plein air studies into vivid compositions. In 1857, Church rose to national and international prominence with his seven-foot-wide panoramic painting, Niagara, which stunned spectators throughout the country and in Great Britain. One critic famously wrote, this is Niagara with the roar left out. By this time, Church had also become enraptured with the work of the renowned naturalist and explorer, Alexander von Humboldt. Humboldt implored artists to travel and capture the majesty of the natural world, particularly in South America. In 1853, Church made the first of two expeditions following in Humboldt's footsteps through the Andean region. His resulting 1859 masterpiece, The Heart of the Andes, is a huge 10-foot painting that he exhibited in dramatic fashion. It was the blockbuster art event of the decade and stunned audiences in New York City and around the country. His friend, Mark Twain, wrote, you will never get tired of looking at the picture. And a New York paper wrote, a new picture by Mr. Church is as considerable an event in the world of art as a new novel by Victor Hugo or a new poem by Tennyson would be in the literary world. It was during the exhibition of the Heart of the Andes that Frederick met Isabel Carnes. They married in 1860 and purchased a hillside farm in Hudson, New York, directly across the Hudson River from the home of his late teacher, Thomas Cole. This property formed the seed of his greatest artistic endeavor, Olana.
Church's artistic appetite for the natural world brought him to the North Atlantic between Labrador and Newfoundland to sketch icebergs. 1865, Frederick and Isabel traveled to Jamaica, which led to some of Church's most vivid oil studies of botanical growth and tropical light. In 1867, Church and his family embarked on an old world painting pilgrimage to the Alps, Rome, Athens, and the Eastern Mediterranean, including Damascus, Jerusalem, and Petra. When Church returned from his voyage, another visionary series of paintings emerged, and his artistic work began to extend beyond the canvas to the design of Olana's 250-acre landscape. During this period, Church also accepted the role of Parks Commissioner in New York City's Central Park and became a founding trustee of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Church also helped to establish a campaign to create a public park along the American and Canadian borders of Niagara Falls, an iconic landscape challenged by increased 19th century industrialization. With Frederick Law Olmsted, Calvert Vox, and others, the artist Frederick Church advocated for the first state park in New York, the Niagara Reservation, a forerunner to the National Parks Movement. Frederick Church's Olana, an artist's home and studio, an experiential and environmental work of art, a 250-acre earthwork, a New York State historic site and public park, a regional economic engine, a national historic landmark, a viewing platform toward the American sublime, a mega artifact, a national preservation of victory, the most intact historic artist's environment in the United States. Olana inspires. It immerses the visitor in a great 19th century American artist's vision that lives today as a compelling creative laboratory. Frederick Church envisioned Olana as a 250-acre environment, masterfully combining architectural, agricultural, park, and wilderness elements into a single artistic composition. Church wrote, I can make more and better landscapes in this way than by tampering with canvas and paint in the studio. From Olana, one can see four states, and Church designed this work of environmental art around its near and distant views, now considered Olana's integral viewshed. Olana is an exalted hill of art. With its vast collections and protected views, Olana has stood the test of time and today thrives as a public work of American landscape art. Yet, it was all nearly lost. After Isabel and Frederick's deaths, Olana passed to their son, Louis, and his wife, Sally. They cherished and preserved Olana for more than half of the 20th century, but Louis died in 1943 and Sally in 1964, at which time Olana faced an uncertain future. Frederick Church was largely forgotten, and the Hudson River School largely unappreciated. A place like Olana was no longer valued, in this period when iconic landmarks such as New York's Pennsylvania Station and the famed Catskill Mountain House were destroyed, Olana's collections were tagged for auction. This masterwork of American landscape art was to be sold and dispersed. David Huntington, the activist art historian, led the battle to save Olana from destruction in the mid-1960s, forcing the reappraisal of the American landscape tradition in art and culture. He identified Olana as the monument of Emerson's, Thoreau's, and Whitman's America, and inspired a Life Magazine illustrated feature that brought national attention to this pending disaster with an article titled, An Imperiled American Treasure. Saving Olana was a landmark public and private effort, engaging local citizens and national figures, including Jackie Kennedy and Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who pressed legislation to preserve Olana as a New York State historic site in 1966. From this miraculous preservation victory, the Olana Partnership emerged as a committed nonprofit steward that champions and interprets Olana as a national landmark of American landscape and environmental thinking. Our precedent-setting advocacy to protect Olana's viewshed yielded dramatic results for the Hudson Valley and the country as a whole. 
In the 1970s, a successful campaign prevented the construction of a nuclear plant on the river below Olana, enlisting art and cultural historians and curators nationwide to establish aesthetic impact as a measurable criterion in the federal environmental review process. In the late 1990s, joining with Scenic Hudson and the grassroots Friends of Hudson, the Olana Partnership used these tools to stop the construction of a massive coal-fired cement plant on a prominent ridge just east of Olana. As it evolved from one staff member to a talented professional team with an engaged board of trustees, the Olana Partnership championed the comprehensive restoration of Olana and the understanding of it as a holistic work of art, an artist-designed environment in which Church's creation of the landscape with the farm complex at its heart is fundamental to understanding his legacy as a painter and national cultural figure. The painstaking restoration of Olana's main house, with its astonishing interiors and vast collections, came first as part of the 2002 Comprehensive Plan completed with New York State Parks and its Bureau of Historic Sites. The joint 2015 Olana Strategic Landscape Design Plan extended a compelling vision for transforming the visitor experience at Olana. This award-winning plan is the foundational document for the $20 million public-private capital development effort now underway at Olana. At the same time, the Olana Partnership established the annual Frederick Church Awards to recognize individuals and organizations who make extraordinary contributions to American art and culture. Past recipients include artists Martin Purrier and Stephen Hannock, landscape architect Lori Olin, collectors and art visionaries Patricia Phelps de Cisneros and Alice Walton, curators and art world leaders Linda Ferber, Betsy Brune, Frank Kelly, John Wilmerding, and Maury Heckscher, parks leaders Rose Harvey and Lucy rockefeller Waletsky, and Olana's champions Jazz Johnson, Byrne and Susan Oberwager, and Kay Toll, and many others. The physical award is inspired by Cleopatra's Needle, Frederick Church played a role in citing this ancient Egyptian obelisk near New York's Metropolitan Museum, joining art and landscape. A small replica was given to Frederick Church for his involvement, and it survives today in Church's painting studio at Olana. If Frederick Church knew that an award in his name was being given to David Redden, he'd be cheering. He is a connoisseur with charm and a lively wit. He is patient but persistent. He is persuasive, enthusiastic, discerning, and a great communicator and storyteller. David is truly a man for all seasons. Born in China of an American diplomat and his New Zealand wife, he was educated in European prep schools and then in the U.S. at Wesleyan College, majoring in art history. Improbably, he became briefly a rebel anti-war activist before joining Sotheby's to become vice chairman and one of the world's most celebrated and successful auctioneers. How is it possible to buy the Magna Carta? And the answer is simple, uh, pay the highest price. But how do you know what the highest price should be, and how do you know that you're getting something that's really worth what you want to pay? Well, I had the opportunity to know David Redden. He was the auctioneer and the person who was in charge of selling the Magna Carta in 2007. Unlike many of his colleagues uh, in the auction field, David was also intensely creative. The example that I like best is that one cent stamp it was a tiny scrap of red paper. But after David worked his magic, somebody was convinced that this one cent stamp was worth $10 million. With his interest in and commitment to preservation as a whole, whether it be scenic landscapes, historical archives, Russian space artifacts, the Declaration of Independence, he has a set of incredible sense of preservation. One could look at his commitment to Alana and, the, and scenic Hudson and see a continuity there with some of the auctions that he has presided over. So many important, august organizations in the Valley, of course, Olana, and so many others that he has provided vision, leadership, financial support, and uh, great direction. To have spent 
30 years in the Hudson Valley. I've been involved with so many different organizations there, art organizations, environmental organizations. Uh, I feel the, the water of the Hudson River flows through my veins. It's, it's part of my life. His love of Olana engaged him both with his extreme knowledge of the art of the period of Frederick Church and with the landscapes that he loves up and down the valley. Alana is the greatest house and landscape designed by an artist in America. It is a great and extraordinary national jewel. And to have that vision still so alive, so brilliantly and vibrantly, is a sort of miracle. For David, the valley represents art, it represents culture, it represents nature, it represents the importance of sustaining our environment, and it represents a, a history of our country and a quality of life that's incomparable. So no tribute to David would be complete without acknowledging Jeanette. If David is the wild-eyed prophet, then Jeanette is the patient saint standing at his side. The ubiquitous David Redden, a gentleman defined, a hero of the river, or finally, I'm grateful to David, we love you. We thank you, David. Hello, I'm Jeanette Redden. Due to ALS, David Redden is unable to speak with us this evening. Thank you so much for this wonderful honor. I know it means a lot to him. I also know David has always been so impressed by the people behind Olana, the indomitable Kay Toll, the tireless Sarah Griffin, Meredith Kane, Sean Sawyer, Mark Prozorski, the incredible staff, the Olana board, and all the supporters who can continue to come out every year to the gala. David has always felt that Olana was more alive, more living than most historic houses. What so captivated him was the level of public and private support, which represented a serious commitment from the state and the Hudson Valley supporters. It was such a strong foundation on which to build. With that, far-sighted people could dream big and make bold plans. It has been my privilege to serve on the Palisades Interstate Park Commission and as a commissioner, I know how important the parks are to New York State and to our governor, but there can never be enough money to do everything that needs to be done. Private support is essential. The Olana Partnership is a model for how private support can have a huge impact on public spaces. I know that this means a lot to David. He thinks of the Olana Partnership as a model for the state and the country. Olana is a magical place. The extraordinary natural uh, setting, the harmony of a human intervention with nature, the combination of accident and artifice, which creates a sense of exaltation. All of this has thrilled David. Uh, Olana is indeed a precious jewel in the crown of New York State. Again, thank you. And on behalf of David, uh, <laughs> Thank you on behalf of Dave for this honor and the award. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of my father, we happily accept this honor, um, but he is the first to say he is only a surrogate for the hundreds of far-sighted volunteers and philanthropists who saved, restored, and maintained that mo most beautiful place, Olana. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. This year, COVID presented a challenge for the Olana Partnership. At Olana, our normal patterns of visitation and means of support were fundamentally altered, and the Olana Partnership staff had to quickly adapt to a new world. It was challenging over the first few months, but our staff successfully mobilized and quickly adapted to the new reality presented by the global pandemic. We are proud of our staff. Let's hear from them about some of this year's accomplishments. This year we launched a brand new virtual webinar series featuring experts and specialists across the United States. I'm happy to report that this new virtual membership benefit has increased our base of members uh, across the United States. 
Our touring program reopened outdoors in a safe way. Visitors could choose from our three forms of landscape tours, including our popular electric carriage experience. We were also able to reopen the main house in a safe but limited way. Our dedicated team of volunteers helped make all of this possible. In an effort to make Olana more accessible, the Olana Partnership obtained emergency COVID funds from the Art Bridges Foundation. For the first time, we've been able to photo document the main house, both inside and out, as well as the larger Olana landscape. This state-of-the-art technology will form the basis of future tours and research. We created our new Family Explorer Tours. We launched a series of virtual field trips for school children, and we transitioned our creative aging program to a virtual format. On site, we introduced beehives into the historic orchard fields with a series of outdoor programs. Our museum store opened following approved health guidelines, and we launched our virtual online museum store earlier this year. We also featured New York Maker's pop-up shop during our peak visitation weekends. We launched our 10-part virtual landscape tour series and also increased our online presence through our popular Dogs of Olana series. We were featured in national publications including Vogue and the Wall Street Journal and launched our first ever 24-hour sky cam from atop Frederick Church's studio tower. Now, the view from the Olana Eye can be experienced around the world. Our annual summer party, which normally draws hundreds of people to celebrate under one tent, was reimagined as the Olana Viewshed Tour. Supporters ventured out into Olana's viewshed for a safe and self-guided interpretive experience. And now, our annual Frederick Church Award Gala, originally planned for the Rainbow Room in New York City, has been transformed into this virtual event, which is reaching more people than ever. If somebody had come to me and said, I'm going to write about Alexander von Humboldt and his influence on American art and culture, I would have said, save that for the rest of your career. Any of us who have had the opportunity to work with Eleanor or even to just have a conversation about art history with her will know almost immediately that she is a tireless researcher. It is also Eleanor's warmth as a person, her ability to engage deeply with anyone on any topic. When I think of Eleanor, I really think of her incredible research, her commitment to American art, her commitment to telling these stories to broad publics. When you first encounter the curator behind so many great projects, uh, the icebergs in Dallas, the Civil War in American art, and now the Humboldt Show, it can be a little bit intimidating, but you quickly learn that she is compassionate, kind, generous soul like no other. Both of us share a passion for 19th century American landscape painting, and of course, for Frederick Church. Tecandama Falls in Colombia is in fact one of the first paintings that Church makes that is a deliberate homage to Alexander von Humboldt. She left Dallas to become uh, a curator at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. And while there, she continued organizing grand exhibitions on important themes in American art. She's done so many important exhibitions. Outstanding in my mind was her great exhibition on the understudy topic of the Civil War and American art. I'll never forget the experience of walking through the galleries and seeing the huge canvases by Frederick Church and the way that she connected this to a historical moment so formative in our nation's history. She's a great communicator and she's so passionate about what she does. It's just, uh, it's always a joy to be around her. Eleanor's got a particular ability to um, to look for very big, big pictures, big ideas in a way that not, not every curator does. It really takes a lot of confidence and, and a lot of knowledge. Alexander von Humboldt was a Prussian scientist who lived 89 years. After years of research and planning, she opened the great exhibition on von Humboldt, which connects both science and art in this important exhibition. And from Cotopaxi to Niagara Falls, to Olana itself, Church's home on the Hudson River, Frederick Church embodied everything he did with an homage to Humboldt. 
beyond thrilled that Alana selected Eleanor, the connection with, with church, uh, with Humboldt, and just in terms of recognizing the importance of nature, understand it, and warn future generations of, of the fragile nature of it. Particularly for Eleanor, this thread runs through her uh, many projects and exhibitions. I would like to congratulate her this evening and to celebrate both Frederick Church and Olana the Place tonight. I want to thank everyone associated with Olana for honoring me uh, tonight. I feel like I am in such good company. Um, I appreciate the recognition for the scholarship that I've done on Frederick Church and on 19th century American landscape painting. Um, I've had the good fortune to grow up around Church's works here in Washington, D.C. Um, with Church's Niagara at the Corcoran, with Aurora Borealis and one of the Cotopaxis at SAM and Rio del Luz at the National Gallery of Art. But I was inspired to learn more about Church after seeing an exhibition on his oil sketches, Close Observations at the Corcoran. And that drew me to my dissertation on oil sketches and my very first trip to Olana. I first visited Olana in 1986 and had the great good fortune to be surrounded by people who gave me their passion for Frederick Church. Um, I remember a dinner over pizza at Mike's in Catskill with David Huntington, who told me the history of Olana, uh, with Jim Ryan, the site manager, and Karen Zukowski, the curator, and since then, it has been my great pleasure to do research, but also to feel inspired inside and outside with what Frederick Church did to create Olana. The sculpting of the landscape, the, the staging of the vistas from the windows, and the orchestration of the works of art inside the house. Um, that immersive quality is one of the things I so admire about all of the work that everyone associated with Olana has done over the years to protect, preserve, and interpret this landmark historic site. I am delighted, honored, and thrilled to be a part of that extended enterprise. Thank you everyone so much. Um, this is an award that means a great deal to me and uh, I, am, I could not be uh, happier with this award and with your company tonight. Thank you so much. In interpreting Olana as a holistic work of American landscape art, the Olana Partnership seeks to make connections between the 19th century and our world today. Our annual special exhibitions in the main house and outdoors engage contemporary artists in examining the nexus between aesthetic and environmental thinking, extending Church's legacy of Olana operating as a creative site at the forefront of our national culture. The work of artists Maya Lin, Martin Purrier, and Teresita Fernandez, among many others, has been featured in past years. Following River Crossings, the groundbreaking 2015 joint exhibition with the neighboring Thomas Cole National Historic Site, Olana will again join forces with the Cole Site and the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art to present cross-pollination in 2021. In addition to historic works by Martin Johnson Heed, Frederick Church, and Thomas Cole, and their daughters Downey Church and Emily Cole, the work of contemporary artists will be included. Heed's famed series, The Gems of Brazil, will anchor the exhibition, which positions 19th century artists in a call and response with 21st century American artists, whose works engage current issues related to biodiversity, habitat protection, and environmental sustainability. At Olana, works by the artists Nick Cave, Jeffrey Gibson, Portia Munson, and Vic Muniz will be featured, as well as a site-specific landscape installation by Gene Shin. Good evening. 
I'm Meredith Kane, chair of the Olana Partnership, and I'm here in the Court Hall at Olana. I can't thank Eleanor and David enough for being such wonderful honorees, such great friends to Olana and the Olana Partnership. The Olana Partnership is continuing to make Olana more accessible and celebrated every day as a national treasure. We can't do this work without our extremely talented staff, our committed board of trustees, and our dedicated partners at New York State Parks. Your support helps fuel all of the great progress we're making at Olana. Tonight, in honor of our two honorees and the legacy of Frederick Church, we have an exciting announcement. In partnership with our colleagues at New York State Parks, we will be lighting Niagara Falls immediately after this broadcast, which is fitting because of Frederick Church's advocacy for the preservation of Niagara Falls and because of his extraordinary painting of Niagara Falls. You can view this live tribute at 8 o'clock tonight by coming back to our website, olana.org. Thank you again for your support for the Olana Partnership and your great support for tonight's event. Good night, thank you, and we hope to see you in person at Olana very soon.